Hello. Hey, everyone, would you please take a seat? Please come in and take a seat. We're about to get started. So everyone, grab a seat so we can uh, get started with the uh, event. Thank everyone for coming. And uh, look like we got a great, great crowd. So we'll get started in a couple minutes if everybody could take a seat. Evening, good evening, good evening. Thanks for each and every one of you coming. We see a lot of friends, family, and people that live in Terrebonne, Lafouche Parish, that depend on the, on the levee systems, the pump stations, the barrier islands, the coastal restoration. With that, I'd like to go ahead and get started with the Pledge of Allegiance by a great veteran, Mr. Sue Henry, who served in the Korean War. Mr. Sue Henry, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. And let's give a round of applause for all our veterans, living and deceased, and all our military that keep us safe. Thank you all very much. I'd like to announce the elected officials, Sheriff Tim Saunier, Matt, Judge Matt Hagen. Oh, wait, Tony's correcting me as usual. We, we have to get the prayer done. So with that, wait. Father Cody Chatier. Thank you for correcting me, Tony. One more move like that, then we're going to have to revoke your, um, your citizenship at St. Francis. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. I see it's just like church. All the cool kids sit in the back of the church, so that's great. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the gift of life that you have given us, the gift of earth that you have given us. In the book of Genesis, it says that you created man on the sixth day. It says that you created the earth. And at the end of the sixth day, you said that all things were good. You're the first one to call the earth good. And as we live in this beautiful parish of Terrebonne, the good earth, let's continue to remember that you give us the mission to cultivate this earth, cultivate this earth for the glory of God, cultivate this earth to continue to protect those most vulnerable. As we celebrate this beautiful coastal day, may we continue to remember our mission on this earth. May we continue to receive your graces to complete which you have given us to do. And we ask all these prayers through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you very much, Father. Now, uh, so the elected officials, uh, Sheriff Tim Saunier, Judge Matt Hagen, David Cormadale, Mayor of Grand Isle. As you know, as along with Terrebonne and Lafouche, took a hard, hard hit by Hurricane Ida. Levy Board uh, uh, Commissioners Sue Henry, Jack Moore, Jay Walker, uh, uh, and Danny Walker. Council Members John Amade, Carl Harding, Darren Guidry, Dirk Guidry, Brian Pledger, Danny Babin, Jessica Domang, and we had uh, uh, Mike Falls, Martin Falls with uh, HTV. And uh, along that, I'd like to introduce my wife, Mona. And all my grandchildren and children who are in the audience, there's quite, quite a few to mention, but thank them for coming. And uh, my wife, who put up with a lot for 20 years, this will be my last, probably one of my last big speeches, because I've turned out and it's, it's time to go spend time with my 22 grandchildren. So with that, I, uh, 
I'd like to welcome Colonel Jones, Mark Wingate, Lacey Shaw, with the Corps of Engineers. A round of applause for them, please. Um, you, know, you know, we can't build anything, we can't do anything with coastal restoration, hurricane protection, without the Corps of Engineers. We cannot dredge the HNC or we cannot dredge channels with our permit from the Corps of Engineers, and they've been great to work with. And, uh, you know, uh, along with, uh, you know, I want to give a, a, a thank you to Chip Klein and the CPRA gang, Brent Haas, for, uh, for getting us as far as we can. Before him, you had Jerome Zerang, an executive director, and also Garrett Graves. I sat on a CPRA along with, uh, uh, with Reggie Dupre. Also, we had Norby Jabez sit on it, and uh, 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 Bourgeois, uh, Dwayne Bourgeois sat on it, Corey Keefe. We've had numerous ones sit on the CPRA to help bring Terrebonne, Lafourche, to Louisiana, where we at. You know, I want to thank the numerous engineers. You know, without the engineers working with us and making it happen, you know, we wouldn't be as far as we are. And, you know, uh, the Boganza to the Gulf, 80 miles of levees, 14 floodgates, and then with the parish building, 30, 31 new pump stations, lock systems, barrier islands, and moist restoration. I want to thank Conoco, Shell Oil, Apache for terracing. Shell also donated 4,139 acres for our 118A system, which we broke ground on the other day. You'll see it come up here in uh, a few minutes. Uh, that was designed by GIS. And you know, we built pump stations from 66 inch to 48 inch to 42 inch to 30 inch to 24 inch with all electric backup generators. We are presently working on a long distance sediment pipeline to bring sediment from Horseshoe Bend and Crew Boat Cut in Chafalaya to, to west of Terrebonne, central Terrebonne, east Terrebonne, and east in Lafourche Paris. We, for uh, the last legislative session, I want to thank the delegation for the uh, MITRE gates. We have the engineering money to start the uh, Bayou Terrebonne at the Twin Span, the Company Canal, uh, 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 MITRE gates. And I want to thank Steve Trosseclair, who really pushed heavily to keep that project going. The Bayou Terrebonne below Montague, we have a 600 CFS pump station at the lock system, which we, we, with the lock system is completed, we're designing this. We've completed two 1,000 CFS pump station, Elliot Jones Hansen, which is pumping 108,000 acres in the Chacahula Basin. And all these pumps pump out from Morganza to the south. We have the Chauvin Petit Caillou uh, lock system, with a 500 CFS pump. Can you realize in the last, within the last seven years, Chauvin is totally under force pump. Their water problems or should, should, should be none. We've put 24 uh, backup generators in old existing electric pump stations they didn't have in the past. In other words, in past hurricanes, when electricity went out, the pumps went out. I mean, it doesn't make sense, but that's the way it was. We've added numerous generators to the sewage lift station. Little Bob Black at Barrel Street, we're under design and engineering for a pump uh, at, uh, excuse, at the Little Bob Black at Barrel. Industrial pump station for Cadian Subdivision, we're designing a new pump station. And by a Black, Geraldine Road, I'm happy to announce we got a $12 million grant. And I, I want to thank our grant people in, in Chris Pulaski and Jennifer Javoski and that group. And, uh, you know, at, you know when we install culverts now ourselves. We don't let anyone else put them in at no charge. And I want to thank the council for working with us on this to get that through. And, of course, uh, I just got a we all, we announcement. We, we got an announcement from U.S. Uh, Representative uh, Garrett Graves. Where they've got $28 uh, million in Morganza on this, on this budget. Let's hope it gets through. We, we were funded $3 million for a 6,000 CFS HNC pump station. And then again, I want to thank the delegation. Thank y'all. It was a tough, I know it was a tough session. 
and for, for voting for HB2, which is all our projects. The port is now uh, lowering pipelines to deep it to 20-foot navigable, which is an economic impact to Terrebonne Parish. And we did get 17 million from the state this round. They again from our, our delegation, uh, the HHC lock, 360 million was put in about 10 years ago. Tony Alfred, Reggie Dupre, the levy board of, of really right around the corner for phase two. They've already done phase one of it. So imagine this, in three years, vessels will come and go in Terrebonne Parish through lock systems. We're 20 years ahead of any seaboard community. In other words, sea, sea level's rising. No matter how you want to say they're rising, they're rising. And Terrebonne Parish will be prepared for when it ri ri rises. You know, and, and, and especially I want to thank the people of Terrebonne Parish. They've taxed themselves three-quarter cent sales tax uh, with a millage, and so did, so did Lafouche Parish. And uh, we, uh, you know, we've come such a long way. And, you know, you know the, uh, this is all done for our children. All, all my grandchildren right here. Come up here a minute. Bring my grandchildren up here. I want to, and any children out there, please come to the front. I, this, this is what, y'all come get up on the stage here. This is what it's about. It's, you know, it, it's about, it's about the, the, the Terrebonne Parish, Lafouche, the state of Louisiana. It's all about these children. This is what we work for. This is what we've, we've pushed for. And with this, we've moved along. And, and believe it or not, most of these are my grandchildren. <laughs> A few. <laughs> and, and, and you know, this is what it's all about right here. These children, your children, grandchildren, uh, all our babies, you know, our deceased loved ones to protect their graves. And everyone in this room is to be commended. That's, you know, there's so many people to thank that we've gotten this for. And I want to especially thank my department heads that's sitting out here and the directors of Terrebonne Power. There's not, not a finer group that we moved and they operate. And when it rains, you don't see they already pumped down the system before the rains even started. And uh, so with that, I want to thank, thank all of you. God bless the people of Terrebonne, Lafouche, Louisiana, United States of America, and of course all our veterans and our first responders. In closing, this is the future of our children and grandchildren. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Now, I'd like to uh, go ahead and introduce Tony Alford, president of the Levy Board. You know, he's the George Patton of the levy system. He pushes, and that's a good name for him because he, he pushes, he pushes, he doesn't stop. Colonel Jones can attest to that. I think Mark Wingate can definitely attest to that. And, you know, we've got Morganza to, to, to where it's at because of this guy right here. And a round of applause for Tony Alford, who's going to be the moderator. Thank you all. God bless each and every one of y'all. Gordy, you're too kind. <clears throat> um, so I, I'm sitting over here, and I'm watching, I'm looking at all these empty seats. And so it's, it's a little bit bittersweet because if these seats were full, that would mean that we probably flooded in the last 10 years or so, right? So we hadn't flooded in the last 15 years and a lot of empty seats. So that's, that's kind of a good thing, I guess. We've got engineers, we've got contractors, we've got family members and speakers and all. So, man, I hope it happens like this again next year. This is good stuff. All right, thank you all for coming, by the way. Um, so I promised the colonel I was going to tell him another joke. I'm supposed to do an icebreaker, right? So, so there's this little bar in Chack Bay. Colonel, you figured out what Chack Bay is yet? It's not too far from here. All right, so there's this little bar in Chack Bay, and this guy walks in the bar, and there's one guy sitting down at the end of the bar. And, you know, he's sitting there, and he's waiting for people to show up, and he asks the bartender, where all the people are, why are they coming later, you know? So he sits there, and he keeps drinking, and this guy's been drinking forever, so they both pretty toasted. And 
Walks over there and he's, hey, where you from? He says, I'm from Chack Bay. I'm from Chack Bay too. I never saw you. He goes, what school you graduated from? Graduated from Chack Bay High. I graduated from Chack Bay High. What year you graduated? Graduated in 74. He goes, wait a minute. I graduated in 74. He said, where you live in here, in this town? I live on Lebron Street. He goes, man, this is crazy. I live on Lebron Street. What's your address? And about that time, this guy has been sitting there watching. And he calls a bartender over there. He goes, what's going on with these guys? It's not like they live in the same place. And he says, oh, that's the Boudreaux twins. They're getting drunk again. <laughs> All right. I had to clean it up a little bit, but it's good. All right, let's see. Um, all right, so the colonel. Colonel Jones has been here for a short period of time, and I can't say enough about what he has done and how he has turned things upside down to figure out. He promised Sue, huh, Sue, he was going to make things happen. You remember that? I mean, and, and he is – definitely followed through on his commitment. He has turned this thing upside down to help us get this project complete. And so when, when I introduce him, I just wanted to lead off by telling you guys that this guy is one of the best I've ever seen in making things happen. And so uh, we're going to finish this project. And uh, we, got, we got a lot of stroke behind us. And this man right here, the Colonel Jones. Come say a few words. See if we can go and get that presentation up. And good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for the opportunity. Sorry, say again. Can you hear me now? All right. Well, good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for the opportunity to join you here for the Terrebonne Coastal Day. Uh, really excited to join this amazing team of teams that you have across here with our outstanding non-federal sponsor, CPRA, along with the Levy and Conservation Districts, the parish leadership, and the state leadership here as well. Excited to talk to you about the great work that we are working alongside with your U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to help protect life, property, and prosperity in this region. Do we go to the next slide? So just to talk about this amazing Morgansis, the Gulf Storm Risk Reduction System that has been developed and in the process of being developed. It is such an impressive project in regards to not only its magnitude, but more importantly, the positive impact it is going to have for the region and the area. At the end of the day, when you look at what will be constructed, 98 miles of levee, 23 plus environmental structures, 22 canal floodgates, 10 roads and railway floodgates, the HNC lock complex, which is being unconstructed and eventually being operated by the Corps of Engineers. That is impressive. But what's more impressive is the impact that it's going to have. You saw it with Gordy Dove up here. It's going to eventually help protect and reduce risk for 200,000 people. That's 200,000 heartbeats that are going to have the risk reduced in this area, which has seen significant impacts due to tropical events. Also to include 52,000 structures that will also see reduced risk. That is huge. And more importantly, you all have identified this and have skin in the game. You've already constructed, as you heard, 80 miles to an interim level of protection, seeing significant results to the tune of an, an investment at the state and local level at a billion dollars. But at the same time, the area is still at risk. So it is imperative that we continue to work together to achieve that 1% level of risk reduction in this area and achieve the design elevations. It's amazing. You look behind you, you can see what the local and state efforts have achieved to date, going to 15 feet in some of those levels. That's pretty impressive. But once we get to a design elevations, there are going to be some sections that are going to be all the way up to 21.5 feet, six and a half feet from the top of that blue tape that you see there. The positive impacts that that is going to have in this region is going to have national impact. And I'm excited to be a part of the team that's helping deliver that alongside our local and state partners. We can go to the next slide. And as such, you can see at the total level, we're seeing a $5 billion investment of which 
federally we're going to be contributing $3.2 billion, and to date, through both bipartisan infrastructure law, community funding, and New START construction, we have $440 million that we are putting to work. We are excited that you can see there that we started our initial construction project, our first one, the Humble Canal preload. We broke the ground on that in December of last year, and it's going to be complete by September of this year. And that will have us poised and ready to award a construction contract for that floodgate in 2027. That's looking to be like a $52 million project, but that's just a taste of things to come. Let's go to the next slide. As you can see, we have 12 projects under design, funded for either design and construction throughout. And all of this is working at breakneck speed. The majority of these features that you see listed, they're going to be complete with design between 2024 and 2026 with construction contracts following closely behind. And your Corps of Engineers is coordinating with your local and state leadership to ensure that we are expressing capabilities to keep this running. So what I'm going to say, at the end of the day, what that tells you, after about 30 to 36 months of pre-award activities, you're going to start seeing significant improvements throughout while we're also executing environmental compliance for all these projects. So we are excited for the days ahead. Going to the next slide, at the same time, even with those timelines, we understand there's exigency in critical locations all part of this system. You know, going to the left here on the western side of the system, of course, is Reach A, which is critical at gap to the southwest of Homa. Remember, again, those 2,000 people, those 2,000 heartbeats. How can we close this off as quickly as possible? As such, you know, per the request of the governor, CPRA, state and local leadership, your Corps of Engineers is at what we like to call the bleeding edge of policy to get this constructed as quickly as possible. We've taken an innovative approach where we are conducting that 30 to 36 month supplemental environmental impact statement for the entire 98 mile system, but at the same time we're doing what's called a tiered environmental as assessment on this section so that we can quickly move out. What that's done for us is we've gotten borings and surveys out there 30 months early. That's going to equate to us getting to plans and specs completion through design by April of 2024 and our first construction contract awarded in July of that year. And even with that, we're looking at ways that we can speed up through innovative delivery. We've taken that contract and broken it down into three phases. The first phase, we're going to look south of the GIWW and how we can start developing an interim level of risk reduction by emplacement of levee lifts up to seven feet while still keeping open locations for utilities and environmental flow. But at the same time, that's going to provide you an interim level of risk reduction that you can flood fight off of from an area that previously had none. You know, second contract from there, we're going to move out, we're going to close those gaps off, continue to improve our defensive position, and then from there, award the third one to get us north of the GIW to close off this critical gap across the board. At the same time, going all the way to the eastern side, we also acknowledge Lockport Trail Rose is also a critical section to move out on, and we are making phenomenal progress working alongside our local and state partners at the project delivery team level. Right now, the reach one of that section is under, under design, and we're also coordinating with the North Flus Levy District to conduct working kind on reach three of that section. We're also coordinating with them on our understanding on how to build the GIWW East Floodgate, and we're going through the ship simulations on that as well. So on all fronts, we are moving out so that we can start award construction contracts in about uh, the 2027 time frame on that. It, it is amazing to see the synergy and work between the Corps of Engineers, our local teammates, and our partners with the non-federal sponsor, CPRA, as we are all working together to reduce life or to protect life, property, and prosperity for this region and the nation. And I am excited for the days ahead and as we continue to improve this system for you all, for those 200,000 people, for those 200,000 heartbeats and all those wonderful children that you brought up here, Mayor Gordy. So on that note, thank you very much for the opportunity to join you today and excited for the days ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. <coughs> All right, um, I think I saw Dan Davis walk in, huh? The levee boy, I don't think we mentioned him. Dan, you around? All right. All right. Hey, Dan. 
All right, Liz Morrell, Gordy insisted that I come up here, even though you're on the agenda, and said that you were here. So thank you. Thank you for coming. Sorry we missed. Yep. Uh, and Mark Wingate, did he, he didn't mention you, did he? Mark Wingate has been with the Corps forever and has been through this whole thing with us. And uh, we want to thank you so much, you and Lacey, for all the help y'all have given us. All right. Uh, so the next guy. He says he only has one year left to serve in his position. Um, he is the, um, yep, he's the up, upcoming state investments on Terrebonne Parish and coastal restoration is what he's going to discuss. One year left, right? <laughs> he's giving me an ugly look. He is fixing to retire, and he has been so instrumental in a lot of the work that we've done and, and that's taken place. And um, let's give a big round of applause for... Um, our uh, CPRA director, Chip Klein. Thank you, Mr. T. Did this come off? All right, can y'all hear me? All right, good. Well, thank you, Tony. You know, I was thinking on the way down here, that when I was first appointed as CPRA chairman back in 2015, my first speaking engagement was at the South Central Industrial Association. And I think it is only fitting that my last speaking engagement as CPRA chairman is Terrebonne Coastal Day. Because I will tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that you have made an old boy from Clinton, Louisiana feel like an adopted son of the Bayou region. And it has been one of the greatest honors of my life to work for you, work alongside of you, but most importantly, get to know you and call each and every one of you a friend. And um, we have done incredible things together. And I want you to think about just five years ago, where Terrebonne Parish was five years ago. Yeah, there was progress being made, but your barrier islands were almost non-existent. You were in need of several pump stations to help dewater areas. You were losing land in Terrebonne Parish at an incredible rate. You had not a single dime of federal funding for your levee system. And your wildlife refuge and some of your recreational areas in Terrebonne Parish were almost in disrepair. Today, close to $200 million has been invested in your first line of defense in Terrebonne Parish in restoring your barrier island chain. From East Trinity to Timbalier to West Bell Pass, we are now at a point in time where you have over $400 million in federal funding for Morganza to the Gulf. You continue to see large tranches of state funding come to this area. And this year alone, just on the surplus portion, close to $20 million in excess revenue from last year is coming to Terrebonne and Lafouche Parish for your levy protection system. The restoration projects are now on par to build thousands of acres of land by each project. And I'm not going to, maybe I'm stealing your thunder here, bitch, but in just a few weeks, Terrebonne Levy District is going to be going to bid on the largest civil works project in the history of Terrebonne Parish, a close to $300 million lot complex on the Homa Navigation Canal. That's what progress looks like. Those are incredible statistics. And while those are incredible, I think what's most important is why those things happened, how those things happened. And it's because of the people in this room. It's because of the people that you continue to send to Baton Rouge to represent you. It's the people that you have working for you at levy districts. From Tony Alford to Reggie Dupree to Dwayne Bourgeois to Corey Keeve to Wendell Curall, now Nick Mathern, all of those guys have a sense of urgency. Your parish president, he talked about all the things that he's done throughout his career in the legislature. When people in Baton Rouge see people in a specific area of this state have the passion and the dedication to this issue and they bring a sense of urgency, 
people at the state level match that sense of urgency. Now, my friend Dwayne Bourgeois told me I could have a little fun here tonight, and I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go a little off script, and I'll tell you a little story about a sense of urgency. So just a few months ago, Dwayne and two of my coworkers were meeting with Senator Kennedy and his staff in Washington, D.C., and we were talking about the need that we need more revenue to fund hurricane protection and coastal restoration projects in this state. And then I needed his office to have more of a sense of urgency when it came to this issue. And what I told his office was, I need you to have a fire in your ass. And I thought one of my coworkers was going to fall out of his chair because he leaned over and he said, Chip, it's not fire in the ass, it's fire in the belly. And I said, well, be that as it may, but if you have a fire in your ass, you're moving. You're going somewhere and you're getting something done. And there is fire in people's asses all over the Bayou region when it comes to this issue. And that's why you continue to see the investment at the state level and that investment is going to continue. Because if you look out over the next several years, the state of Louisiana has now has an updated master plan, which calls for 77 projects across our coast. It allocates $50 billion. And if we build every project, every project within that master plan, 50 years from now, we will have less flood, flood risk than we do today. So you hear all these people in the scientific community and all of these world-renowned experts talk about sea level rise projections and we need to relocate mass portions of our population. But the projects called for within that master plan can withstand all of those environmental scenarios and 50 years from now you have less flood risk than we do today. And this year alone, the state of Louisiana and CPRE will be investing $1.6 billion in coastal Louisiana. That's the largest investment in the history of the state's coastal program. When I started at CPRE in 2008, our annual budget was somewhere around Z 300, 400 million, and now we're investing 1.6 billion. So there's been incredible accomplishments made, but the opportunity that is in front of us is one that we must take full advantage of. So I want to go back to my buddy Dwayne Bourgeois for a second. So Colonel Jones's predecessor, Colonel Murphy, also did a lot of work on Morganza to the Gulf. And I don't remember exactly how this saying came up, but Dwayne all of a sudden blurted out, Lash Palapatat. Remember, I'm from Clinton, okay? I'm like, what? What the hell did he just say? And so Dwayne pulled me aside, and he said, the literal meaning of that expression is don't drop the potato. But the figurative meaning of that saying is don't ever give up. And that's what all of us need to do is never, ever give up. Because a lot of people look at this issue and say, it's an environmental issue, it's about the critters in the sea and the critters in the marsh, but I couldn't agree more with what Gordy said. This is about saving the state we all love. And it's about you. It's about us. And it's about those little kiddos over there. So I leave you with a Duane Bourgeoisism Lash Palapatat. All right. Moving on. Let's see. Um, so our state delegation. Um, so first off, uh, one of our senators, uh, vice chairman, Senate of Natural Resource Committee, um, Mike. Fessy, good Lord, I can't think. Thank you, Tony. I want to thank you all for coming out today. And I, I sit back and think uh, how important this levy system is because I remember when I was a, 
a young boy on how much land we had and how different things have changed now for our children today that uh, don't know what we had 40, 50 years ago. So this levy system has been so important that Terrebonne and Lafourche, the people here, have taxed themselves enough to save our area. And now we have the Corps engineers backing us up. So that's a great win for us. As y'all state senator, almost for four years now, we've worked hard as our state delegation has brought more money home to Terrebonne and Lafourche than most other parishes in the state. So we work hard at that. Being on the finance committee, I see where the money goes, and I know ZC's on the house side where the money goes, and we work hard to make sure that we get every penny we can get to, to save our par two parishes. Um, the, bi the biggest thing I look at it is now that we got our levees to a place to where our flooding is bare to minimum, that now we got to work on our flood insurance, fight with our federal delegation to make sure they give us some reprieve because of all the money we've spent on our levies. And then also we got to look at our homeowner's insurance that people can't afford right now. So I'm working hard on trying to bring new ideas to come up with something that we can get our homeowners to where we can afford to stay here. And uh, over the next few years, hopefully we can make that happen. As hard as we worked on this levy system, I want to work on our insurance because building these levies and protecting our coast is what has saved us from having to move north. And when I go down Pornishan, all down the bayous and, 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 and all the other bayous and see how we're losing people down there, we need to work hard to save that society down there and work hard. So I'm at the state working hard to make sure we're paying attention to what's going on. And I want you to assure you, if you give me two more terms, I'll work just as hard as I have this last term. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Mike. Um, okay, uh, next, uh, Jerome Zarang, Chairman of House Appropriations. Thank you, Tony. Thank you all for coming out today. When we have these coastal days, it gives us an opportunity to kind of reminisce and kind of where we've been. And I, I was truly blessed to have an, I had an opportunity to serve in several roles in working on this project. And I remember in early 2000, when I first started at the Levy District, the Morganza of the Gulf Project was estimated to cost $680 million. $680 million. They got one length of levy that's costing $680 million. But the important thing, and one of the things that really got us, really kick-started, is a tribute to the people of Terrebonne Parish, quite frankly, and Mike mentioned it. You know, to use chip and uh, chipism, we had fire in our ass, but we had to get money to, to continue to, for it to burn. The problem is, is we needed the money, so I went out working on trying to get a tax to support that, and many people want to light my ass on fire because of that, because quite frankly, look, nobody likes paying taxes. I'm the first one. I, tell you, we don't like paying taxes. But that was an investment in our future. And it basically said, and the point we were making back then is that, you know, just trust us, government is maligned on many fronts, and, and some for good reason, but this was an opportunity to say, give us an opportunity to demonstrate that if you put your trust in the levy district, that we will reward that trust and do something important to protect the people, the citizens, and the property of Terrebonne Parish. And obviously you can see that that trust has paid off. The levy district, you know, the admin, parish administrations that have started since that thing, it passed in 2001 and it passed by maybe three percentage points. It was kind of like 52% passage. I had people telling me, Z, we didn't flood from Betsy. We don't need a levy. We don't need to do those things. But it fortunately it passed and that was the seed that got us to where we are. It's amazing to see how far we've come and how far, we still have a good ways to go, but we are in much better position 
every day as we continue to work hard and take the investment that you all put into this system to ensure, and the levy district and the Paris administration are working hard to ensure that that trust is met. And working with the Corps of Engineers, and I know Mark, Mark and I go way back when we didn't think it was gonna be difficult to get things done. Not only do we have levy protection, we also have significant environmental benefit, and Chip mentioned it. The levies are important for the people in the community to ensure that the people are here. But we're gonna have a lock structure in the Homa Navigation Canal that's gonna function for the purposes of allowing boat traffic when the system is, when you have to function for the system to work during a storm, but it's also gonna work on addressing the environmental issues and saltwater intrusion and problems that we have. They're already seeing benefits from the levee themselves and reestablishing the ridge function within the five bayous that are paying dividends in terms of helping to restore and maintain the environment. Again, you don't want to necessarily build, have to build levees to do it, but this just goes to show that you can have the best of both worlds and working together to try to accomplish two goals with a credit to the system and credit to the people who are putting it together. Now, people are going to talk a little about a lot of aspects of the system and things you are today, but I just wanted to come up and at least kind of give you a perspective that an appreciation for the fact that, again, this wouldn't have happened without the people at Terrebonne Parish and the commitment that they made and continue to make because the tax is still being collected, but it's comforting to know that the levy district is making sure that it goes in the right, and matching those dollars. I know Chip and others, when we're in Baton Rouge, I know in working with the delegation and Joe and Berwin, Tanner's not here today, unfortunately, he couldn't make it, but Joe and Berwin and Brian and Mike and Brett, who's not here as well, our delegation has worked very hard to ensure that we can get the state dollars to work with the local dollars to continue these efforts, and we'll continue to do that. And I know the local levy district will continue to put your dollars to good use. And so, again, thank you all. Thank you for having this event today, and thank you all for being here. Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> yeah, before I go any further, well, first off, so my daughter sent me a deal. She says, your blood sugar low or something? I don't know, I was a little off, I think. But I, I wanted to say something about our state delegation. And Z, you kind of covered it. Uh, man, you guys really stepped up and made some unbelievable things happen this year. And it was not easy, as most of you have probably heard. So we want to thank you all and, uh, for leading the charge and making things happen. Um, moving on, uh, let's see, uh, Beryl Amity. Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here today. Um, I'm happy to be here for Coastal Day. I'm going to give a little bit of history that everybody up here on the platform certainly knows, but there might be somebody out here who's new to the area, perhaps. So let me review here. Louisiana's coast is important to so many of us. It's our home. We have a rich, dynamic, and unique connection with the water and the wetlands. Ours is a working coast. It serves as a host to many industries, as well as a place to raise our families and to recreate. It's truly our home. The wetlands have been rapidly disappearing for decades, and I'm pleased to come here today to mention that the legislature, as you heard, has just passed the 2023 Comprehensive Master Plan for a Sustainable Coast. The plan calls for numerous projects right here in our parish. The master plan includes a broad range of large and small scale projects that will be implemented to benefit our area. These projects include hydrologic restorations, marsh, cre marsh creation, ridge creation, and diversions on the restoration side. The Morganza to the Gulf project and levee improvements on the risk reduction side of the master plan play a critical role in protection from storm surge and water. While no plan is perfect, this plan shows a commitment to the citizens of our area and our partners to work on the measures which will help us better face the challenges from Mother Nature over the next decade and beyond. With increasing pressure from the ever-changing environmental conditions, the passage of this plan shows together we're all working for the common goal of keeping our coast intact for many future generations to come. On a personal note, 
I grew up right here in this area. I grew up in Shriver, right near the overpass. The coast is a part of my life. As a little girl, I loved getting up way before dawn so we could pack up the car and pack up the boat and head down the bayou so we could go trawling in Bayou Terrebonne. I mean, in Bayou Ter in Terrebonne Bay. As a seven-year-old, my dad would let me sit behind the steering wheel of our boat and I learned to navigate marsh grass. It was kind of scary for me. Whenever I learned to drive a car as a teenager, I think I still had some anxiety from getting the boat stuck in the marsh grass. <laughs> because of the fond memories of gone trawling early in the morning, I'm still a morning person to this day. I want the same opportunities for my grandchildren. I want them to be able to stay here and go on down the bayou and go trawling and fishing and enjoy our coast. When I was on the parish council in 2012, we were hearing that the plan to save our coast would cost $50 billion, or else in 50 years we wouldn't be here. This would all be underwater. And $50 billion seemed impossible. I mean, the parish budget was only $200 million. Where would we even find it? But we realized we didn't have to find it overnight. We had to start where we could, with the special tax that Z was just talking about, and with a lot of other help. We've been able to get things started. We've been able to make some progress. So it's wonderful to be here today to look at that progress, to celebrate that progress. And I like that saying that we heard just a little bit ago, lash pa la patat. And uh, our next rep, um, and Joe's going to know what I mean by this. Uh, thank you for your vote, Joe. Joe Angeron. Thank you, Tony. All right, I'm Joe Angeron, District 54, primarily represent Lower Lafourche, or Central Lower Lafourche, Grand Isle, and Port Fouchon. Uh, i got to thank everybody, organizers who came here for inviting all of us here. It's, it's an honor to be here with you all. Uh, one thing I could see, and the delegation I work with, y'all fantastic, but I could see that uh, this is a unique area. We all know. We all know our area is exceptional and unique, and uh, it really shows in the legislature uh, whenever you hear uh, levy boards from other areas of the state fighting about taxes and, and money and things like that and I'm, are talking about introducing legislatures to get them all on the same page and how to make them work together. And I just feel so blessed that, uh, that South Lafourche Levy District, North Lafourche Levy District, and Terrebonne, that we work together for the betterment of both, all the Bayou region. So that's what makes us special down here. So the, the, the people in this audience, I see what I call human coastal capital. Y'all make all this happen. So thank y'all for coming here. And uh, really appreciate serving, serving uh, South Louisiana and the Bayou region. Thank you, Tony. All right. All right. Uh, Executive Director, uh, Reggie Dupre. By the way, I went and got Reggie when he was our state senator. I think you had two years left on your term, right? And it was one of the better moves that I've made since I've been president, is to go get you to be our executive director. Thank you, Tony. First, I don't know where Henri Boulet is, but when he put this program together, he told me that we have five minutes. He, gave, he said, Reggie, you got five minutes. Well, limiting Reggie Dupre and window cure all to five minutes is like taking an alcoholic, giving them a thimble, putting him in a liquor store, and you can sample anything, but you limit it to that one thimble. So that's a little, that's a tough task. So I just want to talk at a 40,000 foot level. I'm not gonna go slides on individual projects. I, in a minute, I'm gonna show you the impacts of a hurricane, uh, what happened on the HNC Bovadell floodgate during Ida. But about a month ago, I was interviewed by John Schnell, uh, Channel 8, doing the hurricane special that some of y'all might have saw. And John says, Reggie, you ever dreamed in your lifetime you would see all these improvements? I said, no, never. 
you know, way back in the early days when I was briefed on the concept of Morganza to the Gulf, I said, well, this is the salvation of up my home parish and parts of neighboring Lapouche Parish. That's going to save us. But it's been a long, long road. So now, state and local funding, you go to see these projects in the next room, is kind of set up from east to west in Lafouche Parish all the way up to Bayou, to Bayou Black. And you have these drone vi videos you can see. You can see what we've done, this 80 miles of levees, 14 navigable floodgates, and numerous environmental structures, and some of the environmental benefits that we've seen right before our eyes. Areas in my native Ponishan, which was written off the map, is coming back because we've changed the hydrology. We've made it fresher. It's getting, it's looking much better like it did 40 and 50 years ago. So that's been a great benefit. So besides the billion dollars now, one, we over $1 billion in direct flood control right here in Terrebonne Parish funded by the state and local efforts. And in that billion dollars, I'm adding a couple of hundred million dollars done by the parish government with all the pump stations, converting some floodgates to locks, and it's been a very, very good partnership. But, you know, Z talked about the tax that was passed in 01. I'll never forget this. 2001, I was elected as a member of the Senate, state senator. Z calls me up and says, Reggie, I want to know, we want to go meet with Governor Foster. We want to know how we can shake him down for levy money for Terrebonne Parish, because he was the director of the levy district I am today. So I said, okay, Z, let's get a meeting with him. We went up there with a group from the Chamber of Commerce, and Mike Foster made us a profound offer. He says, Reggie, I don't believe in handouts, but I do believe in helping hands. So I'm going to make you guys in Terrebonne Parish an offer. If you tax yourselves, I will do everything I can to match you dollar for dollar. He says, and I can't commit future governors, but... I have to believe with that level of skin in the game, future governors will follow suit and continue funding us. Well, here we are over $1 billion later, and every governor after that, after Mike Foster, including him, has stepped to the plate, and so has our legislators. Thank you all so much. Um, so the other thing, um, let me go ahead and show you all Ida. I want to show you all what a hurricane looks like. We see the impacts after. But the camera on the HNC Bubba Dove continued snapping pictures every six minutes. So you have a series of about 30 pictures here, starting about 12.30 p.m. in the afternoon of, of August 29, 2001. Just, it's going to roll through about every couple of seconds. You're going to see, and then the floodgate broke loose. This is 18 feet above sea level, and you're going to see waves pounding on top of that flood wall. This is coming from the north this we had a reverse head situation where water was hitting us from the north side on the Homa Navigational Canal. That hurricane caused nine million dollars damage to this floodgate. But you can see the massive amounts of water that was punching at this floodgate and created all that damage. It's a new, we have a whole new world now. We have to look at protecting ourselves not just from the south but also from the north. The Corps is taking those uh, those lessons learned when, when designing the newer floodgates now. But it's, this was amazing. Once I saw this, I mean, it's hard to get me to jaw dropping, but when I saw this a couple of weeks after Ida, I said, wow. I said, this is, this is amazing. Then you, the last picture you're going to see on this series is the, the morning after, after the calm after the storm, and it's pushed it back about 90, 100 feet, broke four pins and broke the uh, pivot arm. And like I said, $9 million later, we made it much better and stronger to withstand. And then Mitch is going to talk about in a minute well, the, the lock system, which is getting built right in the side of it. I want to end by, you know, uh, recognizing the local partnership that has been developed over the last 20 years. 20 years ago, Parish President Dove got elected to the House of Representatives by amazing five votes. He won by five votes, and Z had 20% more. He won in the same district by six votes. Uh, 12 years later, right? Yeah. 
He won by six, Gordy won by five. After Gordy caught the tar and won the election, he calls me up. He says, I've been watching you, and I think you and I are going are gonna to have the same priorities. So well, never a dream they would be that much. So then he knew that the levy district, uh, new parish wide levy district, was an important issue that to, to implement all these projects. So that was a little bit of a, a rift going on, uh, two factions on the district. So he calls me up. He says, uh, I got an idea. He says, uh, what do you think about us supporting Tony Alford for president of the levy board? I said, absolutely, let's try it. And so if he can put all these people together, so here we are 20 years later, and Tony, General Patton is here pushing and pushing. Then a few years later, uh, Jerome was hired by Governor Jindal and went to work for CPRA, and Wendell was made the interim director for both parishes. Then Gustav and I made landfall in 2008. Wendell informs Tony and I, and I'm still the state senator, y'all got to find a replacement. This is too big of a job for one person. So we went on a mission trying to find somebody. About three days later, I get a phone call late one night from Mr. Alfred here. He says, I have the perfect person who needs to go run the Levitt District. I said, who might that be? He said, you. I said, hold on now. You know I'm going to have to resign my elected Senate position in order to do that. He, then he started pushing, well, how much you love Terrebonne Parish, you know, and, and uh, somebody needs to go implement these projects. So I want to thank these two guys for the local partnership we've done and friendship. Um, you know, Tony and Gordy, y'all gave me my final public mission. I've been in public service all my life since I'm in my 20s. And, you know, now I'm getting up there. It's getting close. But I really want to thank you all for giving me the opportunity to finish my public mission where I needed to be and come back home to save this parish. And I think we've done a great job at it. We, I want to end by just take a look behind you. I don't think no one's brought this up. Blue line represents the levees that we're building on the southern end of Terrebonne. And one thing we figured out, if you keep water out of homes in Little Caillou, Montague, Grand Caillou, Dulorge, and Pornishan, you keep it out of Homa. So we have started a plan now to raise our levees from 12 feet to 15 feet on the southern end of the parish. That blue line represents the, what a 15-foot levee looks like. It's actually wider than this because this building is no longer wide enough. Some of the footprints we have are 300 feet wide, and this is a 200-foot wide building. But in some areas, the parish government has improved the old parish drainage levees for a redundant system for multiple lines of defense. So if you live in Little Caillou, for example, or Montague, you have, you're going to have the blue line as your first line above the Barrier Islands, which is the first line of defense. Then, even if it overtops, then the green line is the improved parish drainage levees. So, look, 10 plus 15 is not necessarily 25 foot of protection, but it's a lot higher than 15 because it takes a long while to fill in those areas between those two lines of defense. And with a hurricane, you got time, maybe, that you can actually have homes down these bayou communities that don't flood with an excess of a 15-foot tidal surge. So we saw the success, Hurricane Rita. Hurricane Rita, we had 11,000 homes flood in this parish. Hurricane Barry, there was 11 homes. Unfortunately, the 11 homes were in my native Pornishan area because it, we flooded from a newly uh, constructed levee from Pornishan. But it's it's amazing to see the results, and now we're seeing also the environmental results of what we're doing. And I think we are building a place for our children and grandchildren to be able to call the good earth home for a long, long time. Thank you all very much. All right. Uh, the next guy I'm going to introduce, you know, sometimes you get a little worn out over 20 years. In the process of doing this and getting the no's and maybe's and on and on. And this guy kind of came in like a bull in a china closet. He not only took over the presidency of the North Lafouche Levy District, 
He also took over the association levy boards for the state and kind of got me uh, moving off the bench a little bit and got me re-motivated. And uh, he does a great job, and it's good to be a partner with him. And that's uh, Corey Key, Northern Foos Levy District President. All right. Whoop, turn this off. I guess I gotta hold it. <clears throat> well, we had all kind of conversations before the day started today about say this, say that, and talk about this and talk about that. I'm not doing none of that. I'm gonna have some fun with all of y'all today. First of all, a lot of people we see sitting in the room right now is people that we see all the time anyway. I wish there would be more people in here that we don't see all the time. But I think that camera out there is gonna bring us to the people that do. <clears throat> I'm not giving up this microphone and I'm not listening to the five minute rule because after hanging around with this gang over here for the last few years, you gotta fight for every second you could get to talk. Lash palapata, you know what that means? It means don't give up. You know where it comes from? The Cajuns had a dance called the potato dance. And a man and a woman had to dance and hold the potato between their forehead while they were dancing. And if you dropped the potato, you lost and got out the competition. And the last two left on the floor won. And they won because they didn't give up. So we're not ready to give up. We just got started. When you're riding a car to Mississippi to see a general with Reggie and Wendell and Dwayne and Jerome, I could promise you there was two people in that car that were just listening, and that was me and Jerome. The rest of these cackling hens made me understand the value of, the, of scotch. You know, scotch is good after listening to that for a whole day. <clears throat> so anyway, story is this. 2009, I get appointed to the levy board. 2014, more or less, is when um, I think there was a post-authorization post change that brought the system into North Lafourche. Well, I didn't know the first thing about the Morganza system. I called Reggie. Reggie kind of gave me an education. Dwayne knew a lot, so we just started listening. <clears throat> Immediately, I figured that it was time to increase our profile, so I asked to become the president of the Association of Levy Boards. And, and I did, and I'm in my seventh term now. What that did was allow us to form this coalition that you've been hearing these people talk about, all right? The, the coalition between Terrebonne, South Lafourche, and North Lafourche, there's nothing like it in the state, none. And the, the people that sit on those boards are all people that talk the same language and they all inherit for the right reasons, okay? So we could talk about what's going on in North Lafourche and in South Lafourche and Lafourche in general. There's a system that goes into South Lafourche that connects to Terrebonne that jumps into North Lafourche. So it's more complicated than what you all think. So when you start looking at all the individuals who's involved with this, the state delegation, federal delegation, our good partners at the core, our good partners at CPRA, it takes a lot of people to get this done. And I, I, I can't help but explain to y'all how much the urgency of our situation has encouraged these people to come together and recognize our urgency. <clears throat> and for years, these things have been difficult. Conversations didn't used to be that well, but now it's a very huge concerted effort. And everyone are having healthy con conversations about our environment, 
about industry and about you, the people who live here, people who work here. Y'all are paying for this. This is taxpayers' dollars. This is yours. We work for you. We're here to make the best for y'all. Like I said earlier, we're not ready to give up by any means. I was looking at some this afternoon and in today's world, the environment is very important. If you don't talk, if you're not talking about the environment these days, then you're not talking about everything completely. You know that the state of Florida is the only state ahead of Louisiana that has more nesting for American bald eagle. Do you know that? Do you all know that this system right here has created one of the largest American bald eagle nesting habitats in the country? It's growing. In the 60s, there were four pairs of American bald eagles in the state, and today there's almost 400. The environmental challenge has always been there, but there's other benefits to this system besides just protecting people from flooding. And another thing that happened here, because we have Miss Mer Liz Merle with us here today, <clears throat> so I, 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 we were able through the Association of Levy Boards uh, petition the Attorney General's office to take action against FEMA for hurting you. So we're doing much more than talking about flood protection. We're trying to make the federal government answer to what they're doing because if you're talking about flood protection, you're talking about flood insurance. Our friends at the core have been helpful with knowledge and statistics and they have really, really come to the table to understand our urgency and are paying close attention to our needs. So I could sit here and talk about what's going on in North Lafourche. We got 11 miles of a 98 mile system. We don't have a big stake in it, but we have a stake in it. Collectively, we are doing our best to work for all of you, all of you. So having said that, I guess I went beyond the five minutes, but I guess it's uh, time for some scotch. Y'all have a pleasant evening. Thank all y'all. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. You can get a couple minutes. All right, thank you. All right, um, Dwayne, you want to come up and say a few words? You sure? I'm sorry. You should have been on here, okay? We left you off. But uh, Corey covered for both of y'all, right? Dwayne Bourgeois, the director for North Lafouche Levy District, done a lot. Thank you, Dwayne. <clears throat> All right, the next guy is probably the guy that I give the roughest time to of any human being that I know or have ever known. He's my project manager, and he does a great job. And he has been the mouthpiece to the core for us, to the CPRA, and everybody else and has done a fantastic job, but it just has never been good enough for me because I've always had a sense of urgency. And, and I can't say enough about this guy, uh, Mitch Mormon, our project manager. I, I just like to think that there, uh, he, General Patton gives me a lot of motivational speeches, right? You're a good motivator. The, the real reason they asked me to come up was to translate for Corey. Uh, I know that was probably difficult to understand, so I'm going to take the next five minutes and go over it. I'm just kidding. <coughs> well, uh, Chip and, and Z mentioned earlier, I guess I'm really up here to update uh, what is the largest project um, that we've had from Organza to the Gulf. Uh, I've been around since 2009, I think. We started on this back then, uh, and that's the Homa Navigational Canal Lock Complex. 
Um, I'm proud to say that we uh, received the final plans and specs today. Uh, and as Chip mentioned, we're going to begin advertising in the next two weeks. So um, that's a little misleading. We've been underway with phase one of the lock um, for the last two years. And that was a dredging project to get the channel ready for the lock. Uh, we also did some marsh creation. I think if you go through some of these slides, uh, you'll see some of the work that we did do. We created about 140 acres of marsh already, just with the dredge disposal. So we took it from the channel and created marsh. Uh, we have about 50 acres that are gonna be accomplished in phase two. And that's what we're advertising now. Phase two is construction of the lock complex itself. So we're building a 110 foot by 800 foot lock chamber next to the Bubba Dove floodgate. We're leaving the Bubba Dove floodgate intact. So we'll have a 250 foot open right next to a 110 foot opening. Reggie showed you a bunch of pictures from Ida. You know, the lock complex allows us to control the water inside the system. So that's our savior, relief valve, uh, allowing navigation longer. Uh, it's very important environmentally uh, to this parish. We have flood protection there right now. So this is really an environmental feature and a navigation feature for Terrebonne. So uh, I just wanted to, I'm, I'm an engineer and nerd, so I wanted to give you a few cool things about the lock. Um, it's going to be, we are going to have over 75,000 linear feet of steel piles in that, in that, in that structure. Uh, it's going to cost $285 million. <clears throat> we'll start construction at the end of this summer. Um, but it's just something massive. I, you know, my family has been here in Terrebonne. I've uh, been here my whole life for generations and getting to work on something like this is the whole reason I became an engineer. It's the reason I stayed in Terrebonne. Um, so it's just so exciting to finally be at this position where we're actually going to build this structure. Reggie said it earlier, I would have never imagined in my lifetime that we would do this. So. Um, I'm not going to take up a whole lot of time. Uh, there are pictures uh, all around showing um, the features of the structure. Uh, it's going to take about four years to build. Uh, it's a thousand day contract. Um, but the beauty of this structure um, is it's going to be built with the skilled labor and the people that we have here in Terrebonne Parish. A lot of people, <coughs> we talk about all the work we've done but it's really cool to know that we've done it almost all locally, whether that's engineering or whether that's with the construction guys that are here. So our families live here. We're building our own vested interest in what's going on. So that's really cool, and that's all I have to say about the lot. Thank you. All right, and uh, our final speaker, uh, well, until the next session, um, is uh, Wendell Curell. Where you at, Wendell? We're running a little over. I think we are. All right. Well, it's a real pleasure to be here. But, uh, you know, I'm getting kind of old, so I was there at the beginning. Not when the settlements came, but when South Terrible finally set up the levy district in South Terrible. Uh, they had a meeting at, at the courthouse. They invited me to say a couple of words. And this is what I said. They asked me, why are uh, South Lafourche 20 years ahead of Terrebonne in flood protection? Well, this is pretty simple. Our representative's house flooded 20 years before your senator's house flooded. <laughs> and that is no joke. Dick Guidry's house flooded in Hurricane Betsy in 1965. And Linda Chambert's house flooded in Juan in 1985. And, and so that's really why we've been ahead. And uh, these guys here in Terrebonne, the, the, the district, you know, they were always, they were 20 years behind. Well, they're not 20 years behind anymore, and they're catching up fast. And that's a good thing, because, you know, you look at that lineup on the wall, for Hurricane Ida, 
we have a levee. When you go on the four-lane highway toward Golden Meadow and Grand Isle, there's a levee that goes right to the berm of the road, the four-lane highway, Apache Dock. The debris line, the levee was 17 feet high, and the debris line was 16. Now look, think about 17 feet and 16, the kind of water that we would have had. We were extremely lucky. And the bottom line is you, you never can guarantee you're going to keep the water out. All you can do is keep on improving, improving every day and keep on working at it. And that's what we do. Be better today than yesterday. Be better tomorrow than today. If you have a lot of money, you're a lot better. When you have a little bit of money, you still work to get to that, that area. And again, great congratulations to these guys and, and, and what they've done. Uh, I've been very lucky. Our board, in the, uh, I've been there since 1980. And they have always cared about just one thing and nothing else. Keep water out of people's homes and businesses. And we have focus just on that, nothing else. Don't pacify somebody in Washington. Don't worry about the flood insurance. Keep the water out and those other things will come into line. Again, I want to thank you all for the opportunity to be here. And again, everybody deserves tremendous applause for the progress the people in Terrebonne have had and the increased protection. Thank you. All right, so um, moving on here a little bit. Um, so we want to present a few awards. I want to say something in the process of doing this. Um, you know, Gordy appointed me to the levy board, geez, almost 20 years ago now. I was young when he appointed me. And, uh, you know, I'm so proud of him and what he's done, as not only as a state rep, but as a parish president. You know, we used to go do fun stuff. You know, we'd go out of town with our wives and stuff, right? And we'd go on trips. And, and Gordy was always so worried to leave more than two days because that meant that the council member would take over and be in charge after, was it two days, Gordy? Something like that? So I don't think he's left more than two days in the last eight years because he wanted to be in control and I've never seen anybody, I always tell my wife, and my wife showed up here just recently. I don't know where she, there they are, my grandbaby and all. And, and I always tell my wife, I'm so proud of him because the one thing on his mind all the time, no matter what takes place, is Terrebonne Parish and how to build pump stations, get the water out, and, and build levees, Morganza and the interim levees. And so the first award we want to give is to Gordy Dove for all the years of his service. And Reggie, we had you all food, huh, Gordy? You thought it was somebody else, huh? <laughs> yep, so this is, uh, so basically from Tanner McGee for all the state Legislator. Z, come up here, man. Come over here. On right, y'all good? Come on, y'all come over here. All right. And so so what it says, State of Louisiana House of Representatives, it says, whereas it, it boy, I can't even see anymore. It is most fitting to recognize Gordon E. Dove and to commend his public service to the citizens of Terrebonne Parish in the state of Louisiana. Whereas Gordon E. Dove has dedicated the past 20 years of his life to safeguarding and revitalizing the Louisiana coast, leaving an indelible impact on his community, state, and nation, and whereas Mr. Dove served as a state representative from 2004 to 2016, during which time he had admirably whoa, <laughs> chaired the House Committee on natural resources, we're going to have to hold this up. All right, here we go. And played a vital role in the creation of the Office of Coastal Protection Restoration, Act 523, which later evolved into the Coastal Protection Restoration Authority. And whereas recognized the crucial importance of coastal protection and restoration to Louisiana, Mr. Dove spearheaded the passage of key legislation such as the Barry Island Protection and Restoration Program and Fund, 
and the Coastal Pastors, Pastors Protection and Restoration Program and Fund. Whereas through his career, Mr. Dove further demonstrated his commitment to the betterment of Louisiana's coast by authorizing legislation that secured over $1 billion in funding for coastal restoration and protection and that ensured the implementation of vital projects aimed at preserving our valuable marsh habitats and defending against erosion and hurricanes. Whereas Mr. Dove's recent leadership during the devastating Hurricane Ida showcased an unwavering commitment to the safety and well-being of the people of Terrebonne Parish, effectively coordinating efforts to secure floodgates and water control structures, implementing necessary measures to mitigate damage, and working diligently in the storm's aftermath to facilitate recovery and rebuilding, all of which contributed to the protecting the community and the storm's destructive impact. Therefore, says Tanner McGee, do hereby commend Gordon E. Dove for his public services to the citizens of Terrebonne Parish in the state of Louisiana. Do hereby further recognize his unwavering commitment to the coastal protection and restoration and community development, which has made an immeasurable difference for the state and exemplifies the highest ideals of public services and do hereby extend sincerest wishes that he continue to prosper in all of his endeavors for many years to come. Thank you. Well, I, I really came over here to give an award, and I, I ended up getting one, so thank y'all, each and every one of you. I really wasn't expecting it, and uh, like I said, I was here to read an award for somebody else, and I'm really, really shocked at this. I've, I've enjoyed, uh, you know, I've enjoyed and I've worked along with all these guys and gals up here to make Terrebonne Parish a better place, to make Louisiana a better place. And you know, we brought, we brought in over a billion dollars and you know, Terrebonne's a safer place today. So thank y'all, God bless y'all, and I really wasn't expecting this, thank y'all. All right. He thought he was just presenting one. All right, Gordon, here's yours. Yeah, I thought I was here to do my presidential duty. So it's my honor and pleasure to present a, from the Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government a commendation, whereas Kyle Chip Klein is the chairman of the Louisiana Coastal Protection Restoration Authority Board and Director of Coastal Activities for the state of Louisiana. Whereas Mr. Klein has steered Louisiana efforts for coastal protection and restoration in Terrebonne Parish, which includes a $7 billion investment in seven projects currently underway in the, in the entire region, and eight additional projects completed in the last five years valued at $375 million. Whereas his efforts led the Louisiana legislature's unanimous adoption of the 2023 Coastal Master Plan, which identifies 17 projects for Terrebonne Parish, including a variety of coastal restoration measure, hydrologic, hydrologic restoration efforts, and, and structural re risk reduction projects that, when implemented, imp implemented with non-structural risk reduction efforts, can reduce flood risk to residents and communities in Terrebonne Parish and build and maintain up to 58,000 acres of land, whereas Mr. Klein secured a memorandum of understanding with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers that allowed for the work accomplishments and paid for by CPRA and the Terrebonne Paris Levy and Conservation District. Now, this is very important, to count for 35% of the local share for the multi-billion dollar Morganza to the Gulf Project. That's our match, thanks to Chip Klein and his group. And uh, uh, he also secured $378 million in federal funding to continue building the project, which consists in over 98 miles of levees, locks, floodgates, system designed to provide a 100-year Category 3 storm surge protection to more than 150,000 people living in to coastal Terrebonne and Lafourche parishes. 
whereas Mr. Klein oversaw the implementation and completion of the $166 million Tailbone Basin Barrier Island and, and Beach nour Nourishment Project, one of the largest restoration projects in the Louisiana Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority, has completed to date restoring 1,090 acres of Barrier Island and habitat and 8.6 miles of beach, whereas he has success successfully negotiated policy initiatives related to permits for the Hurricane Protection and Restoration Authority project through the three presidential administrations, Mr. Klein has dedicated his career to protecting and restoring the Louisiana po uh, Gulf Coast. Now, be it proclaimed by the Paris President, Gordon E. Dove, and the entire Terrebonne Parish Council, gov co consolidated government and the extraordinary services of Kyle or Chip Klein be recognized and given heartfelt appreciation for his unwavering years of service on behalf of the coastal issues in the state of Louisiana, and particularly Terrebonne Parish. He is hereby publicly acknowledged and presented this honorary key to the city of Homer and Paris of Terrebonne in his recognition and dedication and service. Please, st standing round of, of, of applause. This guy did more than anybody can even imagine. Thank you very much, Chip. Look at that. With the key to the city that'll open up anything until midnight. Yeah, just don't change the locks on July 3rd, okay? But, uh, Gordy, this means the world to me coming from you. Because I stand on, um, on your shoulders. When I started at CPRA, you were in the legislature and um, learned a great deal from you, from Reggie, every, every person on this stage, especially OZ over there. Um, I'd say all the time I stand on his shoulders as low as they are, I still stand on them. <laughs> and he's my good buddy. But, um, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I say this every time I come to Terrebonne Lafouche. I say it every time. I don't know of any people that care more about the place they call home than the people that live in the Bayou region. And that's why I've had a fire in my ass for the last 15 years to get all those things that Gordy just talked about done. Uh, because each and every one of you inspire me. And um, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. Thank you very much. Wait, wait, don't go anywhere. This one's a lot shorter, and it's something you can put on your desk from, uh, from your two, three skinny friends from Terrebonne Parish, uh, ungreedy. <laughs> so this is a uh, acrylic award uh, with the new Morganza A-Team logo, which uh, Tony's going to talk about in a second. Uh, Chip Klein, Chairman, CPRA, in appreciation of your unwavering commitment to protecting Coastal Communities in South Louisiana, uh, dated today, Terrebonne Coastal Day. Thank you, Red. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Tony's got one more. Hold on. I'm going to make a funny. So Reggie talked about all my skinny friends up here, and I made a joke one time at SCIA. I said, I'm just glad i got to fund these guys' projects, not fund their meals. <laughs> <laughs> all right. One more thing. All right. And, and I need it. Thank Angela. Where you at, Angela? Angela put this logo together. So last year, or year before last, we, we called it, you know, Lafouche, South Lafouche. All our delegates, the core, everybody got an A-team shirt. A-team means we're the A-team. And we're building this thing fast between all of us. And look, in fact, we have one right there. The problem was it was kind of big, so nobody wanted to wear it or anything. So Angela, we asked her to come up with a logo on South Lafouche, Lafouche, North Lafouche, and Terrebonne. And this is, you get the first shirt 
for a team shirt that shows our logo. This is our new A team shirt. You got <laughs> They got a big enough? I'm not taking this shirt off. Put it off. All right, man. Good. Well, good. Thank you. <laughs> Over here? Yeah. All right. All right. So, look. So, we're going to the next panel in a little while. Right now, I guess we have a little break. Everybody can go eat something, walk around. See what's going on, all these uh, slides and, and, and all these projects we have going on, all this giant equipment. And uh, we'll take back in, at, I guess, about 6 o'clock. So we have about 15 minutes, so eat fast, and we'll be back on. Thank you. <laughs>